Good afternoon, my YouTube friends and fans. This is Rabina coming to you on a lovely Sunday afternoon in Glendale, Arizona. I recently relocated, and that's why it's taken me so long to update this relationship video of my new series dealing with astrology, tarot, numerology, aging, and other occult tools that I use in my practice. So, as I promised you guys, my first video is going to be dealing with relationship compatibility using astrology. Now, before I get into the actual compatibility piece, I wanted to discuss the importance of knowing who you are on an astrological level by looking at your natal, a.k.a. birth chart. So, I'm going to use myself as an example, and I'm going to go over my natal chart with you guys just dealing with the area of relationships, okay? So, are you ready? Let's go. Now, my chart is rather unique in that I don't have a lot of planets equally spaced throughout my houses. Um, just to give you a little brief introduction with natal astrology, there are 12 houses in the zodiac or in your chart and each house pertains to an area of life. So for relationships, you're going to look at the seventh house that deals with long-term relationships and partnerships of all kinds, but you're also going to want to look at the fifth house as well because the fifth house deals with love and romance. So my discussion will be based primarily on the 5th house and the 7th house. But you also want to look at your ascendant and the 1st house as well in terms of how you relate to other people in a relationship. So let's get started with my birth chart. I am a Capricorn rising. My ascendant is at 11 degrees 28 minutes of Capricorn. That right there alone makes me a person who tends to be very self-sufficient when it comes to relating to others. I am very cautious when it comes to meeting people for the first time, and some people may see me as kind of very guarded or standoffish, but that's not really the case. Once I get to know you, I really warm up to you well, and a lot of that has to deal with my moon in the first house. So the fact that my moon is in the first house and it's rising in the sign of Capricorn also lends to my ability to be self-sufficient in terms of relationships. So I don't have a strong need to couple up with somebody or to be in a relationship so that I can see myself and the other person. I'm very self-contained, very self-sufficient, which is not characteristic of the majority of people. So that's why I said that my chart is unique in that I am not typically your relationship oriented type of person. That doesn't mean I'm antisocial, but it does mean that I tend to be more independent than the average female. Now, my seventh house has a planet in there, and that's Saturn. Saturn is that planet if you look for the symbol, the seventh house is to the right. We call that the Western Hemisphere. And Saturn is the thing where it looks like the cross, and then there's, like, it looks like a hook ending at the bottom. So Saturn is in my seventh house. So again, since Saturn rules Capricorn, that reinforces the whole self-sufficient aspect within me. Saturn is in Leo which is not a really good position for Saturn. We call that being in its detriment because Saturn rules Aquarius, and Aquarius is the opposite sign of Leo. So whenever you have a planet that rules a sign and it's in its opposite sign, we call that detriment, meaning that that planet is not in a good position or it's not happy in the sign that is in its detriment. So already you're seeing challenges that I have in the relationship department just dealing with my Saturn being in Leo and the seventh house. Now, astrologers do say that Saturn is exalted. They call it accidentally dignified. It's exalted in the seventh house. Why? Because the seventh house belongs to the sign of Libra. 
and Saturn is exalted in Libra. So basically what that means is Saturn is in a very high position in the sign of Libra and accidentally in the seventh house. And this is because Saturn will lend you a good deal of responsibility but also self-sufficiency so you aren't totally dependent on your partner. You can stand alone but you can also be very conscientious of your partner's needs.